Hi everyone, my name is Dan. Um, I'm a member of the BBC Symphony Orchestra and I play this magnificent trombone. I don't usually dress like this, but I thought I would today. Um, the trombone is part of the brass section. <clears throat> I'm sure you know the brass section are, are all made of this stuff and we sit at the back of the orchestra because we tend to be the, the loudest instruments. Um, the trombone section uh, with the tuba, uh, we call ourselves the heavy brass, nothing to do with uh, that. Um, we're just the, the heavy, the, the low end of the brass section. Um, so um, we also call ourselves, in the orchestra anyway, we call ourselves the big shiny things at the back, which we certainly are. When you look at an orchestra on stage, if you look to the right at the back, that's where you'll see our big shiny things. Trombone is also the only instrument, it's been said, that uh, changes shape when you play it, which of course it does. Also, guacamoles is, 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 is a pretty obscure term uh, for trombones. Um, that's because only I know about it, and that's because an old Scottish brass band uh, t uh, conductor used to call us uh, guacamoles and we'd always say guacamoles okay like I'm going to rehearse you from figure C and he did this for years uh, and before I finally asked him I said what excuse me why why do you call us guacamoles this is in Scotland remember and he said oh if you look at what you do he said goa come here goa come here um, and I've kind of uh, remembered that all these years um, so anyway, in the orchestra, um, uh, we play these modern trombones, this uh, fairly, fairly chunky instrument, and um, we like to make a uh, sound like this. from a piece called Young Person's Guide to the Orchestra by Benjamin Britten. Many of you may know trombone uh, from the, the lighter side of music and um, I'll just play a little bit of a tune <coughs> called Summertime by George Gershwin which fits very nicely on the trombone. Just one thing I'll uh, briefly demonstrate about this uh, this instrument, the trombone, um, is that it's uh, got an absolutely enormous range. Uh, really, not all of it we would uh, use every day, but um, it is physically possible to get a, a very uh, high to low range. So, um, so we'll start off in the middle with this note, which is a B flat, which is what this instrument is uh, based on. Dubious whether you can call that a note, but it sounds to me that could be uh, three octaves below that very note we started with. Okay, if we go back to that B flat that I was talking about, we go up to there. to get up there very often uh, but it's a pretty wide range for the instrument okay so as I said this is the uh, the big model trombone that we've arrived at over 500 
years of uh, the development of the instrument, so it's not a new thing at all. I have a, a very old one here, which wasn't called a trombone at all, it was called a sack butt. I'll just pick that one up. Much the same, but yeah, just, uh, maybe you can see the big difference there. The smaller uh, bell size here. So, and uh, consequently makes a slightly smaller uh, sound and was used for uh, medieval uh, music and um, and sounds like this. And so on. Um, we have other incarnations of the, of the same instrument, which we're calling the trombone. I'm putting all these down in the sun, they'll probably have melted by the time we get to the end of this. You can see that this is a much smaller version of the original instrument. This is called an alto trombone. Um, I can feature in music from any period at all, really. It's just because, again, it's a smaller sound, and it's actually, because it's so much smaller, it's in a different pitch from the big uh, modern trombone I started off with. So let's hear a little bit of that. from a symphony by Schumann. So the alto trombone, uh, as I say, it can be used in all periods of music, but um, uh, quite often uh, in uh, classical music, uh, composers like Mozart and Beethoven uh, would often use the uh, alto trombone. And I think it sounds rather beautiful on the top of a trombone section. Um, so that's, if that's a fairly old actual instrument, this, this one is, and if you can see it's a bit fairly green. A colleague of mine always used to accuse me of finding it at the bottom of the sea, this particular one. So, but anyway, this one is rather uh, is, uh, an old instrument, but bringing things right up to date, we have an instrument that's only been invented in the last few years. Bright, another bright, shiny thing. Uh, this is called the pea bone, simply because it's made of plastic. And uh, a lot of uh, uh, younger people start, start on this nowadays um, because, because it's made of plastic and not the brass. Uh, it's a lot cheaper to start on. Even the mouthpiece, you can probably see that's, yeah, that's see-through plastic there. Let's see what this can do. That's not all it can do, but I thought I'd play that. But it's a very handy instrument to start uh, playing on uh, the trombone on, and a great fun. The trombone is a great fun thing to do, just the act of blowing and making the lovely sounds from that. This is a good thing to start on. So that's the P-Bone. I shall just uh, pick up my original instrument now, if it hasn't melted. So, another thing that's been said about the trombone is that it is actually the instrument that features in more groups, ensembles than any other throughout history. Um, you know, uh, string quartets and obviously uh, woodwind ensemble, things like that, no trombone. But that's a, that's a, all, almost it. So let me just have a look at this list. Throughout, I've, I've mentioned the medieval bands that uh, the Sackbutt used to play in. Um, I play in the BBC Symphony Orchestra. Um, there are chamber orchestras, of course, as well. And the rest, brass bands, obviously, there are trombones, wind bands, American concert bands, big bands, uh, jazz bands, Pop, a lot of pop bands use it, and um, even the German umpa bands, of course, you wouldn't be seen without a trombone in it. So, you know, if you're looking at the telly, most musical groups you see on the telly or live or anywhere will probably have a trombone in them, uh, which I think is fantastic. So it's such a flexible instrument. It's not on the lift just because of the slide as well. But talking about pop bands, I want to mention a guy in uh, America called Trombone Shorty, who is fantastic. Uh, he, um, he is his own pop band, really. He's... Uh, I don't know what you'd call it, you wouldn't call it, well, maybe possibly sort of funk rock sort of music that he does. He's always a catch, he's a brilliant singer. And then when you get to the point that it would normally be a guitar solo, he plays his trombone, and it is fantastic. Uh, we went to a concert of his here in uh, London um, last year, and, and what a night that was. So, trombone shorty, the 
reason that I'm here telling you about it today is that um, I chose pick the instrument, or the instrument picked me rather, when I was about 10 years old. And simply, um, I wanted to play in one of those ensembles I just mentioned, the local brass band. And, um, and we went along, and I just I love the sound of this band marching up and down the, the streets and everything. And we went along, and uh, what they were short of, and what they had in their instrument storeroom was a trombone. And that is as simple as that. That's, um, I'm sure I would have been very happy on, uh, on any of the, the, the horns, the euphoniums, the, the cornets, the tubers. Um, uh, but trombone, it was that came my way, and I've been grateful all my life uh, for that. What fun we've had, eh? So I'll just briefly uh, talk about and more briefly demonstrate uh, just a few, very few uh, things for the trombone. Um, I'd say it's in the brass section, brass, uh, brass section, brass instruments. People mostly think of fanfares throughout the ages when a royalty is approaching. You get right quick. Where's the brass players? We get them together, pump them, and then they play. They play a fanfare, something you know. And then royalty can come in, of course. Um, so that's the a very traditional idea of, uh, of brass instruments that we play in fanfares. Um, the trombone itself. Um, I said at the beginning that we all uh, sit at the back because we play loud, but I would much prefer in general to think of the trombone as a beautiful instrument. So I'm going to play some, uh, just part of a slow melody by Bach, actually, and, uh, and, and show you how that goes. <laughs> Also play, you know, it's a cumbersome sort of looking thing, but it can get around. That's the sailor's hornpipe, of course, a uh, famous traditional tune. Um, oh, I played a bit of Summertime, George Gershwin, that time, uh, earlier on. Um, also, this is also the jazz side of things. piece called Reaching for the Clouds by me uh, because we're not all just players <clears throat> and neither do you have to be. I am a composer as well. I wrote that tune along with many others and, uh, and it would be a splendid thing if any of you want to create any of these sounds, that's what composing is, create any of these sounds. Um, we'll have learned to read music by then, I uh, hope. Um, uh, but not necessarily, actually. You can uh, you can create things electronically nowadays, of course. Um, but yeah, it's a great thing to be able to express yourself in that way, to be able to write what you want to hear and what a joy it is when you hear it. So I think lastly, I'm just going to say uh, that um, that's enough about, certainly about me. That's the, This is the trombone. Um, over to you. This is now what, uh, whatever you want to do with it. If it's nothing, that's cool. But if it's something with music, that would be cooler. Um, that would be marvellous. Um, just one last little uh, saying that people have said, you may or may not have heard this before, that everybody, it's well acknowledged that music is the international language. And that if you played a single piece of music, pretty much whatever it is, to somebody from Argentina, uh, Mongolia, Iceland, uh, Fiji, uh, they would all react to it. They would not speak a word of each other's language, but they would all react in their own way to that same piece of music. They would all understand it. They would speak to all of them. So I hope you enjoy making music. <laughs>